This is Miami Vice Maestro Jan Hammer. I always dreamt of uh, an instrument that I could do things like uh, what horn players or violinists or even things like singers could do. And uh, piano seemed to be the only one that really just didn't leave you, leave you any room to stretch in that way, like bending notes, sliding. And uh, I kept imagining, you know, putting things on the piano, like on a harp, you know, where you could move strings. And with the organ, you could only do it if you turn the <laughs> switch on and off. Uh, the organ didn't like that. And um, then it was all kinds of interim solutions, like putting devices on electric piano that would uh, give you a little bit more stretch. And uh, when I finally got my hands on a Minimoog, it was, uh, that was the instrument. And I knew from that point on, that was my voice. If you actually play something in real time, you can strap as many sounds as you want onto that keyboard, which is wonderful. You have to be careful because things can get totally muddy and lost. But on the other hand, I think sky's the limit. It's wonderful if you can pick the right sounds to layer on top of each other. If some of them have spikes, some of them have pillows, some of them have sheets, some of them have uh, rays, and they all work together, just go, by all means, go ahead and put four synthesizers, five synthesizers on top of each other and create an unheard of sound. But you really have to uh, exercise judgment. <laughs> A player like me doesn't really have to spend that much time trying to come up with sounds because there are banks and banks and banks of sounds coming down the MIDI pipeline. And all you have to do is audition all of them. <laughs> It'll take a while. And uh, then you pick some and you can always edit and make them fit what you want to do. But I've spent, uh, since uh, the uh, advent of MIDI, I've spent less and less time really trying to come up with brand new sounds because there are only few sounds that you really like and that you have to make for yourself and uh, I still do those homemade but on the other hand there are so many sounds that are available uh, especially for let's say for Yaka, like the uh, instrument like the Yamaha or the expander Oberheim that uh, there's no reason for anyone to even spend any time and try and tweak the sound from scratch yourself you know, you just go through the things that are available and you find something that's close and then you have to know what to tweak to make it perfect for you. I have this thing that some of, some of you might know. Yeah. Get the fell, I'd start here. <laughs> surprised how many different instruments uh, I can get that sort of that sort of sound on it's really not a particular instrument or a particular patch it's more or less uh, something with a sharp attack with a reason reasonable amount of sustain that is going through some sort of a distortion device or an amp and then it's down to what you play you become uh, a guitar player or whatever instrument it is that you hear in your mind for the lead. And uh, it's not just the, that you're trying to emulate a guitar because guitar could not do the things that you can do on a keyboard. So you obviously come up with different sequences of notes. And that's where it really gets interesting because it sounds like a guitar, but something tells you the guitar couldn't do that.
we've been talking about the differences uh, between playing at a desk, so to speak, and out in the field. And uh, other than just being, uh, it's it's got a few more tricks that you have to learn once the keyboard is hanging this way. But the main thing is that it's a whole lot more fun that you can go out there and just do it. <laughs>